Um, so you've been around the rodeo before, so you know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> you get to canonize another person. <laughs> well, who did I canonize last time? Jean Vanier? Jean yeah. Vanier. Jean Vanier. Mm -hmm. um, oh, this is great. <laughs> I'm going to canonize Sister Janine Gramic, okay. who is the co-founder of New Ways Ministry. And let me tell you, uh, you know, I, you may be too young to remember all this, but, uh, you know, in the 80s, they were really under a microscope. Yes, we are too young yeah, to yeah, remember yeah. the 80s. In the 90s, having the 90s, uh, Cardinal George uh, in Chicago said they couldn't call themselves Catholic. Um, it was really severe. Um, and, you know, she persisted. And, and you know, one of the amazing things about receiving this award was to go down and, and give this talk uh, and see people from, from that generation, from the generation of the 80s, um, and also to see people from your generation and younger. You know, there were people from high school there. So here's this woman who has really struggled um, and has really fought and has really advocated at great cost, you know, within her own church. And so, yeah, I'd put her up... Uh, I don't know. I haven't read every single thing that she wrote, um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd put her up for, if not canonization, then at least servant of God or beatification. Along with Father Robert Nugent, Sister Janine Gramic founded the Gay Affirmative Catholic Outreach and New Ways Ministry in 1977. Almost immediately, the group's wide divergence from official Catholic teaching caught the attention of concerned prelates in the United States and the Vatican began an investigation into their published work and unusual pastoral practices. In 1984, both Nugent and Gramic were ordered by the Vatican to step down from leadership positions at New Ways Ministry, but both continued to speak out against church prohibitions concerning homosexual activity. In 1992, they co-wrote and published the book, Building Bridges, Gay and Lesbian Reality in the Catholic Church. Here are some excerpts from those essays written by Gramic. An obvious function of the genital organs is reproduction, but to maintain that a particular bodily organ serves only one purpose or must serve a certain specified purpose seems provincial at best. A positive and affirming lesbian gay theology or spirituality rejects the notion that a homosexual orientation is abnormal, sick, sinful, or criminal. The 1986 letter from the Vatican's Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, which contended that a homosexual orientation was objectively disordered, obviously did not begin from the experience of being lesbian or gay. Such experience confirms that a homosexual orientation is not contrary to nature, but is part of God's plan for creation and essential for developing the human family. Without the presence of lesbian and gay people in the world, reality would be truncated and humankind unfulfilled. Lesbian feminist theologians are exposing the limitations of a procreative sexual ethic and are suggesting instead an ethic based on mutual relation. Same-sex couples have a greater potential for modeling this ethic than opposite-sex couples who are often subtly saddled with societal conditioning to conform sex role stereotypes involving dominance and submission. A lesbian gay spirituality or theology begins with the individual's encounter with God. It is not necessary that God's presence be mediated through formal religious structures. In their personal encounter with the living God, lesbian and gay people must read the scriptures in the light of their own experience. In his ministry of teaching and healing, Jesus challenged the authority of the religious leaders of his day by the witness of their lives of faith, responsibility, and love. Lesbian and gay Christians similarly reject traditional teachings regarding the moral status of homogenital acts and thus threaten the authority of contemporary religious structures. Domestic partner relationships with the legal rights and benefits accruing to same-sex couples have been acknowledged by several large cities in the United States. These societal developments portend a future conducive to spiritual and theological change. Only when lesbian and gay persons have been accorded full 
and equal respect and dignity as human beings in society and in the church so that they are no longer categorized as inferior insiders or outsiders, will the Christian community be able to say that the God of heterosexism has been eradicated. In 1999, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith issued a notification regarding Sister Janine Gramic and Father Robert Nugent. Both were permanently prohibited from any pastoral work involving homosexual persons. Gramic ignored the notification stating, I choose not to collaborate in my own oppression. In 2010, the USCCB, then headed by Cardinal Francis George, issued a clarification on the status of New Way's ministry stating, no one should be misled by the claim that New Way's ministry provides an authentic interpretation of Catholic teaching and an authentic Catholic pastoral practice. Their claim to be Catholic only confuses the faithful regarding the authentic teaching and ministry of the church with respect to persons with a homosexual inclination. In 2011, Gramic stated, but because I know church history, I know change takes centuries. We are planting seeds for change at the upper levels of leadership. She continued, when we started this work, only 20% of Catholics believed in equal rights for gays and lesbians. Now it's over 73%. The church is moving. In a 2011 op-ed for the Washington Post, she wrote, many Catholics have reflected on the scientific evidence that homosexuality is a natural variant in human sexuality and understand that lesbian and gay love is as natural as heterosexual love. Informing our consciences, Catholics consult scripture and our theological tradition. Here again, there is little firm reason to oppose marriage equality. In 2012, Gramic publicly spoke out in support of the state of Maryland's same-sex marriage referendum, or Question 6, which narrowly passed with 52% of the vote, thus at the time making Maryland the eighth state to legalize gay marriage. Gramic was also present when then Maryland Governor Martin O'Malley signed the legislation into law. I'm very saddened that some of our church leaders have claimed that marriage must be between one man and one woman. That the definition of marriage has always been the same, that it cannot change. Well, this is simply not so. In 2015, Gramic publicly supported legislation legalizing gay marriage in both Ireland and the United States, stating, you can be a Catholic and vote for civil marriage for lesbian and gay people because it is a civil matter. It has nothing to do with your religion. Well, while my religious superiors, the women, were very happy with the work that I was doing. Not everyone was. So there were complaints made to the Vatican. In 1988, the Vatican announced that it was going to investigate my ministry. And this came from the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith. Now, the former name of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith was the Inquisition. So I was being investigated by this inquisition. This investigation um, took maybe about 12 years, at least a dozen years. And the final result came uh, right at the turn of the century, and the Vatican decided that I should be prohibited from doing this ministry. I knew the consequences would be dismissal from the religious community I had been a part of for about 40 years. I still felt called to religious life and I still felt called to speak as an advocate for lesbian and gay people, for those who have no voice in my church. I was able, thankfully, to find a religious community that would accept me and my ministry, so I transferred to the Sisters of Loretto. 
the Sisters of Loretto are an American congregation whose mission is to be pioneers. That was 15 years ago. Now, in those 15 years, the Loretto sisters have received nine letters from the Vatican, essentially saying, if I continue to speak out on behalf of lesbian and gay people, that I should be dismissed. But the Loretto sisters have stood firm, and in fact, they just write polite letters in return, saying that she is doing the work the justice work of our community. And I'm happy to say that uh, we've received no letters in the pontificate of Pope Francis. So he's one of my heroes, 